This is a video number eight of my favorite motorcycle builders. Meerkat. I have two channels on this video with an honorable mention at the end. These channels have impressed me with their initiative and passion for motorcycles. Their design, development, restoration, and overcoming obstacles. Before I start, there's one glaring omission that about 275,000 of you probably notice. It's Alan Milliard. My rule is only one channel per category, so Alan could not be in this one too. There are two channels in this video, and they're both as different as chalk and cheese. Motorcycles and the art channel is um, belongs to Casey Anderson who works part-time out of his garage and he's had this channel for just over three years with 277 uploads and 5.4 thousand subscribers with just over 400 thousand views mixing motorcycles with art is what Casey does he sees the beauty in motorcycles and an example would be this Honda Go-Wing he built. He can see the beauty in a trash bike growing out of the weed. He shows us how to do maintenance tasks. He sometimes has a beer when he's talking about his project he's working on. Uh, and occasionally he utters a, a four-letter word, four word. He takes on restoration projects from what I can see mostly for friends. Sometimes for himself. After the projects are done... He takes us with him on the ride when he does test rides. And sometimes they don't turn out too good, but most of the time they do. He has designed his own two-stroke supercharged 100cc land speed bike. And you, you can see his successes and failures as he goes along on this project. And he's still working on one of them. In the wintertime... He picks various locations in the U.S. and goes over the bikes on the, the bikes that are up for sale in each one of those areas and he explains the good and the bad deals and why they are good and bad deals. He's a, his channel is thoroughly unscripted and he does builds and restorations on his channel, but it gives you a peek into the mind of an artist who combines motorcycles and art. That's motorcycles and art. I think you'll like it. The second channel in this video is Thornton 100 Motorcycle Channel, which was started by founder Jody Milhouse just over four years ago and in business just six years ago. He hasn't uploaded but 51 videos, but he already has 133,000 subscribers and over 10 million views. He engineers bespoke motorcycles and parts. He does the design and fabrication for these Triumph motorcycles for the last six years. Jody has a real love and passion for motorcycles, and I hope this comes through by, I'm going to play a little bit of him telling his story in his own words. To get going, you've got to have the right circumstances. You know, I think you've got to be severely unhappy or you've got to have a burning drive to want to do it. And it's got to be so overpoweringly important that it will be the last thing you ever do if you do that. And I think if, that, if you can have that attitude to start your own business, then you've got the right attitude. My name is Jody, and I own Thornton 100 Motorcycles. With motorcycles being such a key part of my family, with my dad and my mum and my brothers all riding motorcycles, it was always going to be a natural progression onto two wheels. We were raised in an average family, you know, that was surrounded by motorcycles and engineering. Going to car shows when we were younger and 
going to air shows and stuff like that and motorbike shows, I think that really kind of cemented my kind of love for machine. I knew I wanted to run a company and I, I just, just did it. <laughs> I think once I kind of left my apprenticeship and I got that sense of freedom and you can wake up today whatever time you want and do whatever you want. No one's in charge of you. You right. The way that the company started was very much like that. It started in a shipping container. It didn't cost me anything um, to be in there. And I had one ramp that was used and I had used very old used tools that I'd borrowed or inherited. Still got some of my granddad's tools in my toolbox, you know, that we still use. And the biggest issue for me overcoming the hurdle of becoming self-employed was initial upfront capital. So I got a bank loan and I got a credit card. And I remember at one point looking at my bank, you know, six months in and it being nearly 20, minus 20,000 pounds. And I've never even seen that number on a screen before, you let alone it to be in my name and minus, you know. So nothing will motivate you more when you see that. When you've got the money front of things as well, driving you, but also that passion. I wouldn't come to Thornton 100 and feeling like it was work. You know, I was just there because I loved it and I, could, I had the freedom to design and do whatever I wanted all day long every day. For me, it was the just showing up every single day and putting in the work and working hard and not being motivated by the money over doing something correctly and engineering something correctly. I always wanted Thornton 100 to be synonymous with prestigious motorcycles and quality. One of my favourite moments in my bike building career was when I rolled into the Bike Shed show and Winston Ye was there and he owns a company called Roughcrafts and they build bespoke Harley Davidsons and bespoke Harley Davidson parts and I saw this guy that was like this kind of god of bike building in my eyes anyway. I walked in, I pushed his bike there and I put it on the side and he went, is that a Panigale? I was like, yeah, it's like 12 and he was like, does it run? And I said, yeah. <laughs> why he was like where have you put everything when i took that bike apart it was a bird's nest of wiring and i'd taken this horrible plasticky thing and turned it into something that was beautiful you could see all the webbing on the engine and you could see all of the side panels that i'd handcrafted the front end that i'd english wheeled and you know that bike broke me financially i had nothing left and i sold it for at the time which was such a significant amount of money I, it was £25,000 I sold that bike for. And that was the point where it tipped over from being like struggling, 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 negative, negative, negative to bang, here's a load of money. You did good. The young motorcycle designers and builders like these two give me great hope for the future. There's another youngster that's just now getting started and doing everything on a budget and is really doing it the right way and really impressive. And he deserves a mention, and that's Moto Mango. Join me and my friends at Flat Cap Cafe Racer for riding and racing. Please subscribe.